Hey guys, my name is Francisco Hernandez and today I'm doing another episode in my Building the Shot series. I'm going to go over this image on the screen right here of Sarah Hall, who's a friend and model from Austin from a photo shoot that we did last August. I want to give a huge shout out to my friend Bobby for connecting Sarah and myself so that we can actually do this photo shoot as well as a huge shout out to my brother Fino for joining in on this photo shoot and making it a lot of fun. I've mentioned this before in a couple of other videos, but I want to restate it now. Usually whenever I work with a model or anybody really, I always try to figure out the outfit because that outfit is going to determine if it works well within the location that we're going to shoot at, as well as let me know what areas in that location would work best for that outfit. So that's what I did with Sarah. I asked her what were some outfits that she liked or maybe some outfits that she wanted to try in in some photo shoots. And she sent me a couple of options and I really liked them all. But I wanted to just work with two because I didn't want the photo shoot to last too long. I unintentionally shot with that first outfit a little too long and kind of forgot about that second outfit, but it wasn't too bad. We ended up taking great shots with both outfits anyway, so I don't feel so bad. As always, I do want to quickly mention the gear that I use as well as the lighting. I used the Sony a7R 3 because it was my favorite camera at the time. I now like the a7R 4 a little bit better for that extra resolution to work with. And I use the lenses, the Sigma Art 105 1.4, which is actually my favorite portrait lens, and the Samyang 35 1.4. The lighting was the Godox 8400 Pro with the 34 inch beauty dish double diffused with no reflector plate used. And a secondary light source was actually used as well, which is rare for me. I used the Godox 8200 with a strip soft box by Cheetah Stan. When it came to the location, I actually did get a lot of options from Sarah herself. She was very familiar with the area and had a lot of suggestions. But I actually chose this location, Peace Park, I believe it's called, because I actually shot there before back in, I think, 2016 with another friend and model by the name of Emily Miller. This location was pretty perfect to me because it wasn't very packed. It had parking that was very close to the park itself, and it had a good variety of locations very close to each other, like this bridge that we were going to work in and a lot of different areas, too, that you're going to see in the photos. Before I continue, I do want to let you guys know that this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for curious and creative people alike. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity with Skillshare. Skillshare offers creative classes designed for real life and all the circumstances that come with it. These lessons can help you stay inspired, express yourself, and introduce you to a community of millions. For anyone who might still be in the beginning stages of photography, you might be interested in the classes called Fundamentals of DSLR Photography and Fundamentals of Photo Editing by Photo Essentials and Justin Bridges. They're geared towards beginners, so it should be really helpful to you. For me personally, I've been trying to get more familiar with other areas of photography. So one class I'm going to check out really soon is called Street Photography Unlock the Secrets of Composition, Color, and Confidence by Craig Whitehead. The great thing about Skillshare is that it's curated for learning, so there's never any ads, and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever creativity takes you. It's actually not that expensive either at being less than $10 a month for an annual subscription. And actually the first 1,000 people to use my link in the description area below will get a two month free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. When you guys support the people that support me, it's really helpful. So if you guys are interested in Skillshare, use that link in the description area below. So now that we've talked about the gear and the lighting and how we set up the shoot, let's actually show you guys the images. So here's the first shot I ended up taking. I usually do take a shot with just the ambient lighting without any flash so you guys can see exactly how that shot looks like. But for this shot, that was that shot, that ambient only shot. This second shot was supposed to be with the flash on, but ended up not working. So that's why I ended up taking a picture of the flash or of the modifier and the setup so that I could see if the, the flash was actually shooting or showing in the shot. And it wasn't. What ended up happening was my transmitter wasn't fully seated correctly in the hot shoe. So I just took it off, put it back on. And once I put it on correctly, then the flash started firing, which is what you're seeing right here. This shot is the first photo with the light on, but there's actually a difference between this shot and that very first shot I showed you. This photo is taken at 1 2,000th of a second, f1.4, ISO 100. That first shot was at 1 640th of a second, ISO 100, f1.4. So I, all I did was just adjust the shutter to be a little bit faster and did so for two reasons. The first reason is because the heights and that first shot are kind of borderline overexposed, but the second reason is actually much more important and it's because by darkening the ambient, you give the subject something more to pop from. So if I had more ambient, it would kind of look more natural looking. And I wanted that contrast that I'm getting with the secondary shot 
that had the ambient just a little bit darker. So again, this is the first shot taken with flash, but it's not the first shot that we started to kind of take shots with. It was just me getting my exposure right with the lighting. This shot is the first shot that I told her to kind of move around and kind of um, start to pose. She's actually a relatively new model, but she did a pretty good job in terms of posing and I kind of just kind of varied the pose a little bit that she was already falling into. So it was natural poses that I just shifted slightly. With this next shot, because I already liked everything in terms of composition and lighting and exposure, I kind of just varied the positioning. I, I just went a little bit higher. So it went from being lower here to a little bit higher. You, you're seeing more of the ground behind her. And then after that, I just asked her to smile, give a small smile, and that ended up in this shot. I then switched to landscape orientation and I actually got a little bit closer, which resulted in this shot. But this photo does have adjustments to it, but straight out of camera, it looks pretty much the same as this shot right here. So I did do a little bit of adjustments here, but again, this is pretty much how it looks like right here. And I don't want to take too much time going over those adjustments. At this point, I thought I was happy with everything in terms of the photo, the lighting, the exposure and all that. But I ended up taking a shot with the lighting off. So you guys can see exactly how the light looks like you know, with just the ambient light. And I ended up seeing that her arm was kind of just sticking out there. And I thought that was looking a little bit awkward. So I asked her to just move it back. So these shots are very similar to the ones I just took and showed you, but the arm's back. So it's no longer awkward looking. Once I start to like the composition, lighting and all that, I'll just take a couple of varied shots in the same spot. So that's what you're seeing with this photo here where she's no longer smiling and has her mouth a little bit more open. And then I ended up going in a completely different direction and turning the light off because I thought I really liked the natural light. So I took this shot with the intent to edit it um, differently to my liking, as well as this shot here. But after I took these two shots and I thought I liked it, I was like, let me see if I turn on the light, if I prefer that instead. So that's what I did in this next shot here. Once I took this shot with the flash on, I fell in love with off camera flash again and decided to just stick with off camera flash for the rest of the photo shoot. So, there's nothing wrong with these images here, but this is straight out of camera and this is also straight out of camera and I much prefer this image right here. So now that we have the shot with the smile, I decided to go with no smile and asked her to not do that. And then I went ahead and just changed my orientation to landscape again, took a step back, took this shot, asked her to look away and then took a couple more shots. The difference between this shot that you're seeing and the next one is that I went from higher position to a lower position. So you're seeing more of the blue sky behind her that's kind of diffused by the trees. With this next shot, I did have a little bit fun with editing. So I do want you guys to see that there are differences in terms of color if you didn't notice that already. So this is straight out of the camera. This is with some adjustments made, but it's pretty much the same image. I then got a little bit closer and took this shot and then just took a couple of varied shots in the same spot. And then I asked her to look to me and I actually really love this shot here. So once I start to like a shot a lot, then I'll try to grab a behind the scenes, which is what I did with the shot here. Since I do share a lot on Instagram, I also grabbed the behind the scenes in portrait orientation. We then moved to this location that you're seeing on the screen right now. This shot was really nice in that it had a lot of uh, sunlight at that moment that I saw it. And it also had a nice texture to the ground there. But once we got to the spot, and I got the composition that I wanted, which is what you're seeing right there, the framing. I, I did notice there was an issue in terms of exposure. The exposure on the sky is a little bit too bright for my liking, while the exposure on the trees and the ground are pretty good. Whenever I encounter this issue, I have to choose between one or the other. Do I want the sky to be exposed better or do I want the ground to be exposed better? And what I ended up choosing was exposing more for that sky. So for this shot that you're seeing, I'm at one 12 50th of a second at ISO 100 at f1.4, but then I go to a faster shutter of 1 8,000th of a second ISO 100 f1.4. This obviously resulted in a better exposure in that sky, but you do have a darker ground now. So there are going to be some shadows showing up on the back of the leg and areas that aren't lit by the flash. So what I do later on is add a secondary light source, which is that Godox 8200 with the strip softbox. This shot is actually properly exposed, maybe a tad bit underexposed, but it was pretty exposed fine. But what I ended up doing in the next two shots is bring the light closer just out of frame of the shot so that it's even softer lighting, which is what I always like. What I anticipated was the light being too bright by moving it close because if the shot is fine in terms of strobe output, 
at a certain distance. Once you bring that light closer, it's gonna be too much power. So I anticipated that, lowered the output, which resulted in this shot and this shot here. And another thing you might wanna pick up on is that I asked her to, instead of having the hat on the side, I asked her to put it on and that's something that's different. But again, those two shots are too dark. And then the next shot here is actually exposed better. This photo that you're seeing is completely out of camera with one exception. I raised the exposure one stop because this shot is actually kind of similar to this exposure. What I always do is I always have my LCD brightness a little bit too bright on my camera. And what's this, what this results in is having an image on my screen look fine, but once I bring it to the Lightroom, it's a stop underexposed. So I don't mind this because it kind of gives me like extra protection for highlights and overexposing my shots. So that's what, um, that's why you're seeing this photo here and this photo here, one stop darker. But I wanted to show you guys this shot because I did raise it in exp uh, one stop. So it's actually, you know, it's actually a planned, a planned mistake, I guess. And here's the behind the scenes of those previous shots that I just showed you. I did end up shooting with the Sigma Art 105 immediately after this. So that's what you're seeing in this next shot right here. When I started taking pictures with the Sigma Art 105, I ended up having a lot less sky in my shot. So I wanted to expose better for the background that's behind her that was more prominent in the shot. So instead of shooting at 1 8,000th of a second, I then lowered the shutter to be 1 1250th of a second. One thing I didn't anticipate though was a car photobombing me. So this shot is without the lighting, which is a shot that I took intentionally so that I can show you guys how the light looks like or how the shot looks like without lighting. And then after I took this shot, I took a photo with the lighting on, but you can see now that there's a car immediately right behind her. Sometimes I'll try to experiment at a shoot if I like a shot and I ended up really liking this shot. So after I took this one, I decided to go for a little bit more dramatic lighting and put it more to the side and lower. So I ended up taking this shot here. It's actually a little bit overexposed. So I must've brought it a little bit closer and then lowered the output. Actually, I lowered the output of the light as well as raised the ambient. So previously I was at 1 1250th of a second and now I'm at 1 640th of a second. So that's just one stop brighter in terms of the ambient. And I also obviously lowered the exposure of the strobe because it's now perfectly fine. But at this point, I see that her hand was a little bit like this. She was giving me a gang sign. So I asked her if she can close her fingers together and took the shot. I ended up liking this shot. So I took a shot without the lighting. So you guys can see how it looks like with just the ambient. And then I also took one more shot just in case it looked better in terms of expression. And then I took a behind the scenes, but she actually went to go use the bathroom or something. So I just took a bit behind the scenes without her. I had already shared this before on Instagram and I'll throw up the video right now. But the reason why we sh shot with this palm tree behind her is because we were actually on our way to a bridge that I saw um, previously. They had a lot of sunlight, but at this time of day, the sunlight wasn't hitting that bridge so much, but it was hitting this group of palm trees perfectly. So we ended up using that as the backdrop. So right now we were about to walk to that bridge that's over there, that one, but the sunlight, sunlight looks like it's not gonna hit the bridge right now. And then we saw this being light up and this made its own little spot. So we're gonna shoot here. Using the Sigma Art 105 was actually pretty perfect for this specific scene because my mom's truck that I was borrowing, which is a ginormous truck, is actually immediately behind those palm trees. So using the compression of the 105 was actually perfect for this scene. And it just looks great with the palm trees being lit up by the sunlight. I got the lighting exactly where I wanted it to be. So all I had to do now was just adjust the composition. So that's what I did with these next couple of shots. I asked her to just, you know, move slightly and then move the pose a little bit, smile now, and then also took a shot without the lighting so you guys can see exactly how it looks like. Took a behind the scenes for you guys. And then also went ahead and just got a little bit closer and took some headshots, which I rarely do. These shots are actually some of my favorite shots that I took all of last year because of how the lighting looks like, her eye color, the composition, the styling. I just fell in love with all those different things. So these, some, these are some of my favorite images from last year. And once again, once I nail things down in terms of lighting composition, all that, I do try to just take a couple of variety of shots in that same spot. So that's what I did here. I asked her to smile, asked her to hold the hat. I took a step back, got a wider shot. I took another shot with that same composition, but with a little bit more of a smile. And I also, in this next shot, I asked her to raise her head because if you pay attention to the lighting on her face, the shadow of the hat 
is actually making her exposure on her forehead and on her eyes a little bit dark. So I asked her to raise the chin a little bit so that the light hits her face more, which resulted in this shot and the shot here. We then moved to this rocky archway looking thing that was right across the street. So it looked really nice, had a lot of nice texture. So we shot there and I ended up taking this shot here without any lighting so you guys can see how it looks like. And then turned the lighting on, which resulted in this. I took a blurry shot for some reason. And then I took a shot in focus with the lighting off again, then turned the light back on so you guys can see exactly how that looks like. I don't really take a lot of full body shots at my photo shoots. So that's why I wanted to make sure I grabbed some here. That's why I took this shot and then this next shot here. And the main difference between these two shots here is my composition and timing the wind because there was a little bit of wind that was making the strands of her hair kind of show up too much. So I was trying to make sure that they don't show up too much. You can see exactly that going on right here in this shot with the hair showing up more because it was more in the air. And then this shot here where she's mid blink, it's more controlled and um, not so much in the air. And all I did was just wait for the wind to kind of settle down for a second and then took another shot. She gave me ex great expression. So I actually really liked this shot and I ended up just taking a couple more just in case I prefer a landscape orientation. And then I ended up taking a behind the scenes, I believe. Oh, at the next, um, the next composition. I do want to note that I did have two lights going off here. I had one on her and I had one that was intended to be a little bit of rim light on her arm and on her shorts but I ended up throwing it in the wrong direction. I threw it more towards the wall. So it lit up that wall behind her more, but it actually helped out in giving more exposure to the rocks and it gave her, which gave more color to the rocks, which kind of helped the entire color of the background behind her. So these next couple of shots I'm about to show you, I did have her in the middle of that archway. And then I took a couple of shots um, up and down and left and right. Kind of like a, if you guys ever heard of a Brennizer or a Boca panorama, it's just basically creating puzzle pieces of a shot and then stitching together in post. So I did that. I took these different shots here. You can actually see that I have a rim light going on behind and to the left. That's not showing up in this shot. You see it in here, just on the arm there and on the, the side of the body. Um, so I ended up taking these couple of shots here to kind of stitch together in post, which is what I did with this shot here. And then I ended up taking it behind the scenes, which is what you're seeing right there. As I mentioned earlier in the video, I did shoot with that first outfit a lot. So when it came to the second outfit, when I remembered about it, uh, we were shooting in like the last bit of light in the day, but it ended up working perfectly because I exposed perfectly for the trees behind her and the, the sky behind the trees and the foreground, which was also green. So there's a lot of green going on, which perfectly matched kind of the vibe of her dress. Obviously she's not ready in this shot. So I'm going to switch away from that. Here's a shot without any lighting on. I actually think that maybe the Godox 8400 Pro's modeling lamp was on because you see a little bit of light on the left side of the face here. But after I took this shot, I ended up taking a shot with the flash firing, which is this photo here. And I just varied up the shots a bit and I ended up really liking this photo right here. Very nice and colorful. The lighting's pretty good. But what I did after these shots, this shot here is something I regret. I decided I like this lighting here more evenly lit in front of her. So let me go ahead and just take those dramatic shots that I, I sometimes take. So that's what you're going to see in this next couple of shots. Very dramatic lighting. I actually did two things wrong in my opinion. I did dramatic lighting. Um, I asked her to be serious for that dramatic lighting. And I actually went at a higher position, which ended up making a lot of the ground show up when I did actually like the greens that were showing up in the trees more. So here are those next couple of shots and what you're seeing right now in the back of her on her arm and on her back is the secondary light source that I have set up, which you're going to see in a second. I actually really like this shot here because of her expression and this photo here is pretty good, but the catch lights are not there. So kind of, I kind of don't like this shot, but I do prefer this one. And then here's the behind the scenes of those shots. Like I mentioned before, my brother Fino did actually join me on the shoot. So here's a quick behind the scenes. This is a little bit dark and I'm not sure why it's a JPEG. But here's a behind the scenes shot from this location. Since I had already taken some shots of her standing in this dress, I decided to take some of her sitting. And so I had her sit down on the ledge that she was standing on, which ended up working perfectly for two reasons. It provided her or actually allowed her to be closer to those greens that were behind her and also allowed me to frame her better in the gradient that was going on behind her. But in this shot, the exposure that I chose makes the background a little bit bright. So what I did was go from 1 25th of a second 
to one eight hundredth of a second, which made the gradient show better. So I ended up liking this a lot better and kept this exposure. Here's a shot with the light on, but then I turn off the main light and only show the secondary light so you guys can see exactly what each light is doing. Then I add them on together. Uh, the first, the secondary light is actually kind of blending in too well, so you don't really see it so much. And then in this shot here, you kind of see it more in the hair. I think I asked my brother Fino to move more towards the back so that it shows up more in the hair and on the arms and stuff. Then all I had to do was just take a variety of shots in this location, which is what you're seeing right now. I actually forgot to show you guys something which is really important. In this shot right here, in this shot right here, the lighting is more evenly exposed on her face. There's less shadows on one side because it's more in front of her. When I start to shoot more to the side of her, I kept the lighting exactly where it was, but just moved my position. It made more shadow show up on the side of her face because she ended up turning away from the light. So here's a couple of the other shots I took. I ended up really liking this one. So I ended up taking a behind the scenes, which you're seeing right here, which is the Godox V1 bear in the back. So I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. I'm not a really big fan of this shot and the rest of the shots that I end up taking um, for the rest of the shoot. So I did want to let you guys know that before, but some of the reasons why are because I typically like to shoot in golden hour, complete night or lots of sunlight. When blue hour happens, I do kind of struggle with color temperatures. I don't really use gels and I need to learn how to use gels. So I always struggle with getting the color temperature right on the person and then the background. Sometimes it's, it's complete opposites of what I want. Sometimes they're too cool in the front or the background's too tungsten or vice versa. But I just want to let you guys know that. For this shot here, the mine lamp is on. I want to say it's like at 50% or something. Um, and then after this shot, I, I decided maybe I'll turn on the flash and see if it's too bright, even though I was guessing that it was going to be too bright. So that's why I'm at ISO 400, 1180th of a second f1.4 because I really needed to bring up the ambient. And usually when I do that, the flash is too strong, which ended up being true for this shot here. So this shot is too bright, and I ended up deciding, okay, I'm just gonna just shoot with a mind map, which is what I ended up shooting for the next couple of shots here. For this shot here, I actually decided I needed to raise the ambient because previous to this shot, I was at 1 1 60th of a second, ISO 320, f1.4, and I needed to make that background brighter because it's pretty dark right now. So I did that by raising the ISO to 800 and then slowing the shutter from 1 60th to 1 100th. And that's what ended up creating this shot. I then took a couple of variety of shots because I was, I was pretty fine with the lighting right now. And then after these couple of shots here, I actually really like this one here. But after that, I decided to move the light more to the side of her and then get a couple of dramatic shots like this. And then I ended up taking a step back and changing the orientation and change the orientation so that I can get more of a portrait orientation for a full body shot, which is what I ended up taking right here. I also wanted her to twirl a little bit to get some sort of motion showing. But when I did that, when I asked her to do that, there was just a little bit too much blur for me. So I decided I'll take a couple more shots and see what I can take. I ended up raising the ISO a little bit higher to from 800 to 1 1000th. And I actually do like the shot here that I'm seeing. And I actually like this one here, obviously, because I had rated it one star. But after this shot and this next shot, I was like thinking maybe the flash is still, you know, maybe it's not too bright. But obviously it was because here's the shot that you're seeing right now with the flash on. As I mentioned a second ago, I do usually have an issue with getting the color temperatures correct exactly how I want them to be. So one thing I experimented with in this shot here is I fired the flash because I know it's going to have a cooler temperature of 5600 Kelvin. And even though it was overexposed, I was thinking ahead of time, maybe I can just lower the exposure and end up being exactly where I want it to be. So I ended up doing that. I took a shot with the flash firing, even though it was overexposed, and then I lowered it 1.2 stops, which resulted in this color temperature and this look. So again, after I took this shot with the flash firing and then lowered the exposure, I took some shots with just the flash completely off and just using the mine lamp. Um, the rim light right here, I believe is the cheetahs Trip soft fox with the Godox 8200 mine lamp and the main light is obviously either off or just low but obviously in the next shot you see it's brighter so I did raise it up a bit and then the difference between this shot and the next one is there's no longer a rim light so I, I was thinking that I wanted a rim light but then I felt like the exposure was too even on the ground and I wanted some shadow so I just turned it off and got the shadows there. 
But I guess with this shot, I actually was wanting some rim light in some shots. So I was very undecisive. So I ended up using the rim light here. And then I took a shot with nothing on so you guys can see exactly how dark it was without any lighting on. But then I went ahead and took a couple more shots, which is what you're going to see on the screen right now. And that's pretty much it. So back to the image that we're here to talk about, I want to show you guys how it looks straight out of camera and then how it looks like with the adjustments that I made. I did bump the color a bit from a regular saturation to plus 80 in the blue primary section of the calibration area. And then I didn't do any sharpening, but I did adjust the saturation in the hues, actually just the saturation. And then I bumped the exposure a little bit. And with the adjustment brush, I brightened up the eyes. You can see the adjustments right here. And I also raised the exposure of this area because again, there was shadow in the area because of the hat. So it looks like this straight out of camera. I just brightened up just a little bit. And then I also raised the exposure of all of this area that you're seeing right there. The hat, a little bit of the neck, a little bit of the face. So I'm gonna show you guys how it looks like with that off and then on. So it's very subtle, but it is an adjustment. After I came to this result, then I brought the shot into Photoshop, which I'm about to show you right now. So again, here's the shot from Lightroom, but I'm gonna show you guys how I edited it now. One thing I did do was do a little bit of color correction, which is all this whole group is about. I added some color from the cheeks where there was less saturation. All I did was make a blank layer, sampled with the eyedropper tool, the, the colorful area of the skin, and painted it over the less colorful area and then just changed the blending mode to color and then kind of just adjusted the opacity. So, I'll, so I'm gonna show you guys real quickly a close up of the skin. You guys can see it kind of right here in this area. I also did a round of frequency separation just to soften up some areas. So this is at 50%. You guys can see exactly what I softened. I also did a little bit more color correction here on the lip because I felt like there was less color here. Maybe it's a makeup issue. So I sampled some of the color from the side of the lip and then added it over here. And then I just kind of corrected it that way. But the biggest thing that you're going to see in terms of editing is the dodge and burn. So that's probably my biggest thing that I always like to do to change the photo to add more depth to it. So I'm going to show you guys this is the before and this is the after with Photoshop the before and the after. And what I always do when I do dodge and burn is I always make a, a, a black and white adjustment layer so that I can really see all the flaws of the skin tones so that I can correct them with dodge and burn. So I want to show you guys the before and then the after. The before and the after. You can see that there's a little bit of dark area here, a little bit here probably in this area here, in some areas here and here. I'm seeing here a lot, sorry about that. But you can see a lot of the, the mistakes of the skin, the imperfections. So I, I went ahead and adjusted those to be correct, or I, I corrected those with dodge and burn. So that's what you're seeing, and that's why I use the black and white adjustment layer so I can see those flaws more. So again, here's the before and here's the after. I actually did brighten up a little bit of the area that's not the skin, like the hat, and a little bit around her for a nice little bit of glow. I then added a levels adjustment layer, which is what I usually do to add more color to the photo and more contrast. I actually added two different ones. And then I added a gradient in the top right corner and then brightened some areas of the hair and then brightened the entire shot right here, just a tad bit. And that was pretty much everything I did to edit the shot. I hope this video was helpful. Hope it kind of shined a light on how I think in my photo shoots and how I process my shots and some of the issues that I face. So again, hope it helped you. If you liked it, give it a like and let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and I'll see you guys in the next video.